Welcome to part 43, if I'm not mistaken, of the Building the Rick and Morty app series. We're going to continue working on search, particularly being able to actually click one of these options buttons below the search bar if they exist and then show a bottom sheet or some way to actually you know, select an option. So drop a like down below. Let's go ahead and jump into things. So I do have the Rick and Morty app opened up here. Let me actually go to the actual documentation. Bear with me. And hopefully I think I've got Xcode already opened up as well so we don't have to endure that. So previously, this is kind of, where, kind of where we ended up with, we did set up a delegate via a protocol to get the selection out to our RM search view controller. And that's basically done down here. And at the moment, we're just saying, you know, print out should present option picker. And we're passing in this function, whichever dynamic option the user has selected. So the smart thing I think would be to basically show a, uh, perhaps a bottom sheet and we're gonna pass into that bottom sheet a view model, um, or a bottom sheet controller, I should say, a view model in there that has the options that'll allow us to pick an option. So let me first start by creating a brand new controller. And I'm kind of playing this by ear, so bear with me here. We're gonna design along the way. I will call this RM uh, search option picker view controller. I'm gonna create it, it'll be Swift. And in here, before we do anything too crazy, let's just set a background color. That is not how you do that. We're gonna do view dot background color will be red. And then let's jump back to the search. And when I select one of those option buttons, what I wanna do is create an instance of the RM search option picker view controller. It's a mouthful. We're gonna to want to present this view controller animated and there is a way to say VC dot sheet uh, presentation controller. And on this, I'm gonna say detents. And this is actually something Apple introduced in I wanna say iOS 15. So let's go ahead and use this. So detents are a way where you can specify like what, what heights are we allowing our bottom sheet to uh, you know, use, right? Will it be the entire height, 50%, et cetera, et cetera. So, I'll maybe go with uh, just medium here. This is the only one we are gonna allow. Go ahead and hit Command B to build your project and I'll hit this play button at the top left to build and run. Now what I expect to see is that red screen pop up. Awesome, when uh, we actually open this and it looks like it does pop up. And at the moment we can actually swipe it down too, which is uh, pretty cool. We don't have a, um, what is it called? We don't have a pull handle on this. So let me actually click into this and see if this uh, this type of object, the UI sheet presentation controller, already op uh, offers a uh, way to show a pull handle. So there is prefers edge attached, whatever height, not relevant, not let relevant. And there is a prefer grabber visible. I guess Apple calls it a grabber, which I guess is technically correct. Uh, it's kind of a funny name, but I will actually go and use that here. So here we'll say prefer grabber visible will be true. And I feel like it should be true by default. It kind of would look nicer in my opinion. So cool, so we know this thing definitely works now. And what we want to do is we want to show a way to pick things in here. So how do we go about doing that? So the easiest way to do that would be uh, throwing in a table view inside of here. So what I'll actually do with both of these search controllers since they're semantically similar is I will highlight them and create a group and I'll just call it search. And this way under our other folder um, for controllers, we have all of our search stuff nicely organized into here. So let's jump back into here, the search option picker. And what we'll do is we will create the following and I'll just stick the table view directly in here uh, since you know we can abstract it later on, but we wanna create this with a RM search and I believe it was one of the view models that held onto the uh, dynamic options. So it was RM view model. Let's see which one it was. I guess search input view view model. And then we have uh, that dynamic option on there, which is basically what we want to hang on to. Based on this is how we will actually uh, create, and this should actually be called option. Based on the option we pass in is how we will actually go about creating the list of options we wanna make available to the user to actually select. So I am just adding a bit of comments here for some visual separation, make things look a smidge nicer. 
we want to call the uh, initializer for the superclass. Since we are overriding uh, that, we're implementing our own constructor here. And let's actually hang on to, I'll just hang on to the option directly, I guess. I'll be lazy about this for now. Later on, we'll abstract this to a view model. So before we call the super init, we just hang on to the option there. So awesome, let's create a table view inside of here. So right up here, we have done this elsewhere already, so I will go through this rather quickly. And instead of having a custom table view cell, we are able to just get away with using the base cell, which I will register because, you know, all we're gonna really show in these, each of the cells is the name of kind of the option. And our base table view cell already lets us do that. So there's no point in creating a custom cell. We are going to lay it out with constraints again, so I will assign this property to false. You can see whenever I try to type quickly, the autocomplete doesn't really decide to cooperate, so if you ever see it flash, it's basically me just hitting Command Z to quickly undo. We're going to add this as a subview, set up its delegate, and I'll also set up its data source. And maybe we'll move this to its own function called setup table. And we just want to set up the basic stuff that I just cut from that function. So the delegate data source, add it as a subview. And then of course we do want to lay it out as well by activating a collection of constraints for it. So that will be top anchor constraints equal to uh, view dot safe area layout guide dot top anchor. And I'll copy and paste this. This will be left anchor, right anchor, bottom anchor, and respectively left anchor, right anchor, and bottom anchor. Now if you try to build your project, if you do a command B, you'll see two errors here, which is expected because we aren't conforming to the delegates or the data source for this table. And respectively, we'll want to add that in down here. So we'll say UI table view delegates as well as UI table view data source and bring in the required function. So we want number of rows. I'm just going to hard code this to four just to see something. We'll want to DQ a cell and we'll also want to handle cell selection, basically when the user picks one of the filter options. And this is going to yell at me because we do need to DQ a cell. So we've typed this a million times, which is why I'm not really explaining this part. So, you know, just a pretty typical vanilla table view here. And just to see something on it, I'm going to set its text label text property to, I don't know, let's call this Hello. Let's call it iOS Academy. It's a little more exciting than Hello World with an exclamation mark. All right, so we're building here and it is still yelling at me. Let's see why it's yelling at me. So we fixed that over there. And I think it's yelling at me because we changed the initializer of this to take in an option. So this expects to now take in an option. And this option will be the option that we're getting in the uh, parameters of this delegate function. So good deal. Let's go ahead and stop our app, give it a build in run. I will come into search and let's say I want to sh uh, pick a status. So cool. We have uh, these options down here. And at the moment, when I click on it, uh, nothing happens other than uh, you know seeing the selection uh, and then it gets deselected. What we want to probably go ahead and do is we want to implement a delegate or a callback or something to get our selection out. Before we even do that, we want to go and actually write out a list of options available for each dynamic option. So that naming might be super duper confusing. So what I will do is I will try to explain it. So each of these options we have that the user can set and there needs to be a collection of, you know, what genders can I pick? I think it's just male, female um, that this API offers. So a definitive list of things that we want to show in this table view. So on this, let me call this choices. So maybe it's a little better of a term. And choices will, I guess, be another enum in here. Well, let's see, what do we want to do? So we could do choices. Let me think of a type safe way of going about doing this. So when the user selects one of these choices, the choice should be applied to the particular uh, button that we click. So if I click on gender over here in the select male, instead of seeing gender, I should see male. So perhaps we'll just use strings. It doesn't have to be all too complicated. 
So this will be a computed property. We'll switch on self. And for each of these elements, so we got status, we want to return a array of choices. So we'll do that for status, for gender, and also location type. So let me go and jump to the API documentation and let's actually see what options are available. Let's check filter character. We can filter by the status and that is alive, dead, or unknown. So I will stick that in here. So alive, dead, and this will be unknown. Let me make sure I spell that correctly. Beautiful. Alrighty, and then the other thing we want to be able to filter by is gender. And it looks like female, uh, male, genderless, and unknown. Looks like there's two more options that I forgot about. So we'll say male, female, genderless and unknown and it's really important that you do actually use lower cases here because we're gonna we're gonna basically um uh like funnel this down to our api call so if you do use capitals here you know it'll make it not work we will use a view model to format the strings to make them look nice when we display them but i did want to call that out since it is kind of relevant and then finally we have location type and i think we can filter out location types here by just type um, and let's see what types are actually available since I absolutely do not remember. So get all location. Let's see what types this comes with. So let's see, I don't see a type here. So type is planet and let's actually go to our app. Why am I not using the app that we made? So let's close this and let's go to the locations tab and let's see what types exist. So it looks like there's a space station, there's a cluster, planet, um, there is a microverse. So let's do microverse, planet, and uh, cluster. Those are the three options we're gonna allow here. So what did I say? Cluster, planet, and microverse. And I really was about to type out metaverse, which is not what we want. We want a microverse. Kind of sounds like microwave, interesting. So now that we've got this here, if my uh, commentary has passed, let's jump back to our search option view controller where we are kind of just hard coding how many things to show in the table view for the bottom sheet. And inside of here, if you recall, we are hanging on to the options. So instead of showing, you know, four elements, we're going to show options dot or option, I guess is what I called it dot choices dot count. And respectively, the way that we get the nth option is saying choice equals the choices at the appropriate position. And finally, here we can say this will be choice. And we will say just uppercase this. And maybe we only want to uppercase the first letter, but let's see what this looks like with the uppercase string. I want to say this is reasonable. And here we will inform caller of choice. And maybe we'll use a different pattern to inform the color since we've seen the delegate pattern used plenty. So let's click on status. All right, we can pick alive, dead, or unknown. We'll pick dead here, and absolutely nothing happens. And uh, I guess that's probably sufficient for this video. The one last thing that I will do is let's amend this. Uh, this instead of uh, taking in an option, we will actually take in a option as well as a selection. Uh, block. So I'll say selection here will be an escaping closure where we pick a uh, string as the parameter returning void. And right below here, I'm going to say self dot selection block is selection. We will want to hang on to that selection block on our controller here. So selection block will be of this uh, closure type here. And we should see that error go away, hopefully. And once we've made our selection in here, what I can go ahead and say is, hey, dismiss this view controller with an animation, as well as call that selection block. So the way we're going to inform the color is by saying self selection block, and we want to pass in what was selected. Well, we already know that from up here. We'll go ahead and pass that choice in there like so. Hopefully I didn't screw that up. Go ahead and do command B to build. And it's yelling at us because back in our initializer, we want to add that selection block. If you autocomplete and just hit enter, it'll use a trailing closure syntax. I each put curlies at the end. 
and we can say selection in. And I'll just print out did select selection, build and run. And this will be our last tidbit of this video. Let's see what gender we want to search for. So I will clear up my console and we go with genderless. It dismisses it and boom, we've printed out genderless. In the next video, we'll actually update the button here as well as uh, construct our uh, actual API call that we'll you know, send out to get this uh, information. So thanks for watching. Drop a like down below. I'll see you guys in the next part.